What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, you guys? So we are back again for a whole new episode review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 13, Episode 1, No Justice, No Peace. So we get right into it, and it literally starts off heavy. I was like, oh, girl, you know, we just reliving the fact that we actually are, you know, living through this pandemic, and um, it's a global thing, and also living through the fact that we went through the protests that we've been going through and you know getting the housewives different viewpoints on stuff and how they've been you know going and dealing with the pandemic and dealing with being in quarantine and stuff like that uh we see um Portia out there on the front lines doing the protest and of course you know on the one hand I am kind of glad that they are giving awareness to that because that's one of Portia's main storyline um in the beginning, I I will say that, and I'm proud of her for being out there on the front lines and trying to do what she's trying to do, you know. And they even mentioned that because <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen, y'all. I knew it was gonna happen when they mentioned her being out there doing the protests and stuff like that about how dense the bitch was back in the day. Okay, when she first got on here and they went to that um, you know, they went to that church and they was talking about the underground railroad and she said it gotta be a conductor and it gotta be an entryway and exit way or whatever. I said, bitch, when she like we was over Portia then. We was over Portia. If we was on the fence about Portia, like is this girl really who she say she is? Who is her when we was trying to get a feeling for her? Baby, when she said that shit, I was like, you got to be kidding me. That is something that a child will say that is just learning about the Underground Railroad. Mama said, who is riding the, who is conducting the plane? Okay, who conducting the train? Who, who, who driving it? Okay, what stop do we get off of and what tunnel do we get in on? Okay, that is what she was saying. Mind you, her granddaddy was a goddamn civil rights leader. And I said, girl, what is happening? But she, you know... She brought it back and um, she redeemed herself with this whole protest of being uh, very much active in this whole thing. And I really don't feel like it's a show. Like I said, her it's in her bloodline. So, you know, she redeemed herself with that. Then we get this whole scene um, with the girls coming back. And um, <clears throat> we got, uh, what's her name? Cynthia having a little brunch lunch, you know, for Candy and Marlo. And we see Candy show up and, you know, Cynthia was saying how, you know, she was quarantining over there at uh, in California for the first four months or so. And so now they're finally back up in um, Atlanta at Lake Bailey, you know. And so at this point, we see everybody a little thickens. Everybody a little thickens because everybody didn't gain some quarantine weight, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it happens. Ain't no shame in no game. Cynthia said, I got on that scale. That scale said 180. Listen, Cynthia titties was titty in, okay, bitch? They said, listen, we gonna get some shine, too. Candy said, bitch, if you show me your nipple one more time, I'm probably gonna suck it, okay? That's what Candy was thinking. You can't tell me no different because, bitch, I probably was thinking the same thing. But anyway, Cynthia look good. Candy look good. Everybody look good, you know? And then Marlo showed up. Bay B. When Marlo showed up with that mask on and um that shield on and that thermometer, okay, I said, if that ain't me, girl, I don't go nowhere without my I got one right here and I got a different one, okay, bitch. What you not gonna do is not gonna play me and Ashley ain't gonna get caught slipping, okay? That's not what's gonna happen up in this bitch. But um, you know, Marlo was there for a little bit of comedic relief, which was needed. Um, they sent down there, she trying to get them six feet apart. They're trying to see what's going on with Kenya. Nobody has really heard from Kenya. You know, Cynthia said the last few times that she did actually hear from Kenya, she seemed kind of down, you know. And then we get them trying to FaceTime her, and the connection wasn't really good, you know. And so we see Kenya later on in the car. I think she was going to a lawyer or whatever to talk about this divorce or whatever's going to happen um, because... I just say, can you fuck that nigga, okay? Divorce him and let it go. It, you, you tried the marriage counseling stuff, and it just seems like it ain't working. He Y'all just not compatible right now. Y'all made a beautiful baby. Ain't no need to be stressing yourself out over this no more, okay? He don't want this. You know, you said that when, when you was in New York and y'all was interacting or whatever, you asking him what he's doing later on, and he's snapping on you just because he got to work or whatever. You know, let that shit go, okay? You stressing out over it like... 
I don't know, Kenya, don't let no nigga, y'all, don't let no nigga stress you out, okay, don't let no bitch stress you out either, that's the lesson learned up in this whole situation, and don't jump into something just because you so ready to do something, and, 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 and you trying to prove a point to somebody or whatever, I don't care what the reason is, make sure that person is right, take this as an example, because you don't want to be going through this shit, but I do feel bad for Kenya in the situation that she's in. And y'all got to bear with me until I get a scan for my phone because um, if you didn't watch my power review, I told y'all what happened up in there, baby. I got I finally set this computer up and, bitch, the camera sucks ass on this computer. So, I'm recording on my phone and I hate the angle of it, but I love the quality of the clearness. So, I didn't want to give y'all no shitty quality, but as long as y'all can see me and hear me, we good. But, um, anyway... So, we get back into it with Kenya. Kenya, you know, she finally at the lawyer's office. I said, this lawyer, Wims or whatever, Antavius, girl, he be on all the um Atlanta reality girls, um lawyers and shit like that. But whatever, he, you know, trying to get the situation out with her. You know, you can clearly see Kenya being stressed out. Kenya is just like everybody else. She gained weight. You know, she said she gained like 30 pounds. You can see it all up in her face. And, you know, just sitting there and seeing her talk about this whole situation with Mark and, you know, what they've been going through. You can just tell that she's stressed out about it. And I'm pretty sure she's probably rethinking some of the wishing that she could take back some of the decisions that she made. Like jumping head first into a relationship, not just a relationship, but a wedding. Spear, you know, speeding through to a wedding into a marriage that is basically with somebody that you really don't know. Kenya, you did not know that man good enough. I don't care how long you claim that you know him. Y'all was not around each other long enough to get to know each other, to get to know your ins, your outs, your ups, your downs, your likes, dislikes, and all this stuff because you wouldn't be having all these issues right here, right now. You know what I'm saying? This felt more so like a shotgun wedding or I'm getting married just because I need to show people that I can get married and I don't want to be the butt of the jokes no more or whatever because that's one of my things that I really wanted to do and to say that I've been married and then I got my child out of is something that I also wanted all right so that was the mistake on Kenya's part you know and she's learning it she gotta live with the consequences of it now this man is basically treating her like shit okay and that's basically what's been going on he don't love her and if she did love him I truly don't even feel like she was in love with him I feel like she has love for him but and she just want to hold on and not seem as a failure that's what I see with this relationship and you know she said she ain't have a prenup. She brought him a car. She brought a car that she gave to him. I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. She said, I paid my house off in cash. Okay, girl. You know, so um, they only been married together for like three years. And the lawyer was like, I don't see them like trying to divide the assets up and give him half or whatever. But what is this relationship like with um Brooklyn? You know? She said basically when we go see him, he'll come to the um hotel and play around with her, but there's nothing much else like him taking her or something like that, you know, and I feel some type of way about that. That says a lot, okay, and even the producers had to ask um Kenya when she was doing her little interview, how is it with his other kids? You know, and she said she chose not to talk about it. You know, she don't want to speak on it. On the one hand, I can understand that because that's none of our business and that's none of her business to talk on. That's his business. But that also says a lot. That also says a lot because if he was a great parent to all of his kids or whatever, she could have just went like, oh, he's really good. You know, there's no problems and all that stuff or whatever. But he, she chose not to say anything. So it just leaves, you know, some doubt up in there. Like, you know, he's not up to par like he needs to be. That's what it seems like, you know, from her not wanting to speak on his issues, which she has to write because it's none of her business. Well, technically, it's none of our business. But, um, yeah, and then, you know, um, <clears throat> he had to, the lawyer had to talk her down. You know, once they got through, um, you know, you basically, do you want the custody ag agreement? Do you just want to go ahead and get this divorce? What do you want to do? You know, she has to figure out what is going on, what's happening. And, you know, he had to tell her, your failures, well, his failures are not your failures and your failures are not his failures, okay? Y'all, these celebrity women get up into these relationships and thinking, you know, that they got to take on everything and all this stuff. You know, he broke that shit down to her, okay, because she was feeling stressed out and sad and everything about it. 
And I bet you she won't do no shit like this again. This is a lesson learned for Kenya, okay? You can't just fuck around and get with everybody, anybody, just because to show people that you can get a nigga, you know? That's what it seemed like. Then we move over to uh, Portia ass, and she's on the way with um, Dennis to Louisville, Kentucky. This is when she was going out there to protest with Tamika Ma Mallory um, for Breonna Taylor. And, you know, she was talking about the history of her grandfather, Hosea Washington, Note Williams, and um, being out there on the front lines and, you know, having people call them racial names and stuff like that. And, you know, not understanding what was going on and herself having to correct herself and to educate herself. And, you know, she even admitted that she didn't know a few things. I said, how you didn't know at your big age? How you didn't know certain things? Did you pay attention up in school? Or did they not teach you this in school? Because we went to, I had black teachers. And I went to a black school. So, they taught us um, history. You know, black history and stuff like that. So, we knew about the leaders of the Underground Railroad. We knew about the figures in black history and stuff like that. Plus, I took the college class. I took a class in college, a couple of classes in college. So, that's that. But, you know, we had to go out further and educate ourselves and educate our, our, our own kids because these schools, most of the times, they're not going to show and tell everything. You know what I'm saying? We can't just rely on the schools. But you have your own grandfather that's right there that's a living freaking figure in the civil rights and you were still asking about the Underground Railroad and who was, girl, she, she addressed it and she said she made up for it because, you know, she got her daughter. She doing all this for her daughter. You know, she had to make a little video saying basically. Basically, I'm not trying to get myself killed. I don't want to kill myself or whatever. I'm out here trying to protest and, you know, having something that her daughter can look up to, which I think is admirable. So, you know, Portia out here fighting a good fight. So we get Candy talking with Riley. You know, Riley is about to get ready to go to New York because she's in NYU. She's about to start school up. Um, and you know, they out there tied about to clean off the car. Riley was supposed to be out there to clean off the car. Let me tell you something. Riley look like a grown ass woman. Riley do not look like 18 years old or however age she's supposed to be. Riley has always looked older than what she's supposed to be. After she got through doing the jerk on the intro back in the day, y'all remember that when Candy had the cockatoo hairstyle, the rooster hair towel, bitch, and Riley used to be jerking her ass off. And every time I see it, I'd be like, now do the jerk, jerk. Jack, 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 Jack. That used to be the shit. The new boys. Come on. I just gave y'all some music y'all need to go back and listen to. Okay. I just seen this video of this girl that was 18 years old listening to a whole bunch of music back in the day. I, damn, we got to call it back in the day, like Soldier Boy and all that stuff. And Lil John and the East Side, you know, and the Yin Gangs. And then, no, none of it. I mean, damn, I get it, you 18 years old. But you mean to tell me you ain't heard Crank They Soldier Boy before? Superman that hoe? Well, you ain't hear that before? Bitch, it made my heart hurt. Okay, we got to educate the kids these days. We got to educate them, you know what I'm saying? The parents not doing a good job. But anyway, moving on from that. Yeah, Riley little grown-ass... You know, she coming out there and basically, you know, they discussing how much uh, college is going to be and how expensive it's going to be. And, you know, Riley suggests daddy should go ahead and pay for it because he ain't putting in on nothing else. And then we get into this whole thing about, you know, um, Block not paying child support on like $100,000, you know. And um, Candy said, I had mentioned it to him one time, and he up there talking to me, talking about some, called me acting like, saying that I'm acting like a broke bitch, okay? And it was like, no, bitch, you acting like the broke bitch. You riding around here in Bentley's and shit, and you can't pay your child support, you know? She tried to put him on child support when um, Riley was like four or five years old, and he never really paid it. He just stopped paying the stuff, you know what I'm saying? And so... I sat here like, granted, it's messed up. We hear the whole situation, and we've been down this road with Candy and, um, you know, Riley and having Block on this show at one point, remember that, and um, trying to discuss things and, you know, Riley just not getting attention from Block like the other kids that he has gotten, um, has gotten the same attention, but... At this point, we see that Riley is a little disappointed. She don't know if she's open to a relationship with him, but, you know, nigga, pay that money. Okay, that's what you need. That's the least you could do, all right? And um, <clears throat> because you were not there in my life, you know, and I get it. That whole situation was going on, and I'm sitting here like, no lie, I like Candy. 
I was just like, please don't let this be her whole storyline for the rest of this season or even half of this season. I don't, I, don't, I can't go through uh, 10 episodes talking about child support issues and stuff like that when we already did that a few seasons ago, okay? And nothing's never changed, okay? Riley is grown, you know, and I get it. You need to get your money or whatever, but we've been through that, okay? We've been through that. Can we go through something else? You know what I'm saying? Please don't let this be the whole focal point of your storyline. No shade. It's a it's a universal topic because it's a lot of people that's going through it. But girl, I don't want to hear because <laughs> we already seen it. I can see if this was the first time it's coming up, but it's not the first time it's coming up. Okay, once a nigga show you what they're about, that let that be it. Okay, he ain't gonna change. He ain't gonna change. He ain't gonna even if he's being blasted on national TV, he still haven't changed. Come on now, you're not gonna get what you hope or what you deserve to get from this man. Um, moving on from that. So, Portia, you know, she's still out there in Louisville doing the protesting, and she was just letting us know that they were moving from different uh, sites to different sites, and it's just that because they don't know who the people are, most of the people, um, they can have somebody infiltrate the group and who can give away the location where they at, and you know, because they was out there arresting protesters, and we seen Portia get arrested multiple times, you know, and so that's why they moving from um, different place to different places to protest or whatever, and that's what they waiting on for the final place to go to and all that stuff, so, you know, Portia, this, it seems like this whole first episode, Portia just out here doing her activism thing, and everybody else is doing other real life shit. So, um, the girls, Cynthia and Candy, go over to Kenya's house. Kenya wants to show them, um, the, do, the new renovations and, um, stuff that she's putting in. She's putting in a play area for, um, the Brooklyn, and she's putting in a pool with a jacuzzi. You know, because when her and Mark was together, Mark didn't want no pool. I said, hold up. Now, see, listen, when I get put on and I get my, um, I, I actually make some money that's comfortable and, you know, truth be told, I'm going to get my mama a house first before I get me a house. But when I get comfortable enough, I'm going to give me a house, right? And it has to have a pool in it. It has to have a pool in it. I don't care if it's still up in Chicago, bitch. You're going to have to have a pool up in that hole, okay? Indoor or outdoor, bitch. That's It has to have a pool, all right? I haven't touched pool water in a minute, and I'm kind of mad about it, okay? But anyway, uh, I said, why you don't want no pool? Uh, and I said, Kenya, that's your fucking house. See, Kenya, that's what's making me mad. And I hope, truth be told... Kenya, please don't let this whole season be about this um nigga. Okay, divorce him. Because that little conversation that you had on the couch with Candy and Cynthia about, you know, how bad he treats you and all this stuff. And you talking about the lawyer gave you the choice whether or not you want to do the separation or you just want to go ahead and do the divorce. Bitch, do the divorce, okay? Because I'm tired of this. And you should be tired too. All right, now I'm trying to be nice or whatever because I do feel for you a little bit regardless of how other, may, other people may feel and how you've been doing or whatever. But you know i'm trying to give everybody a whole new chance whatever new season and all this shit but at the same time baby girl why are you putting up with this shit you haven't seen tim for um months or whatever mainly because of quarantine and you really wasn't doing that well before the quarantine happened and you know your friends see the way that he's talking to you you allowing that that verbal abuse and stuff like that like what is going on with that is making you want to stay up in this and literally have you thinking well should i or should not bitch get a divorce it's not gonna work okay he is stuck in his place he is gonna be who he is and he's showing you that get a divorce let it the fuck go okay now, Candy, let me ask you something. Before you had fame and all this stuff, you was up in there folding up clothes. And you was mopping floors. You was cleaning and shit like that. Now that you got this fame and you didn't get fucking comfortable with nannies and all this shit and housekeepers or whatever, y'all know how to fold up clothes. Y'all know how to fold up clothes in a reasonable amount of time. Let me shut up because I got clo uh, clothes up in here that's been in the bag for a while. Okay, so let me shut up. Let me shut up. See, I was about to read Candy on that. And then I looked over there and there's a whole bag. Actually, there's two, okay, and a basket full of clothes that need to be folded up and hung up, okay? So, let me shut up. I'm going to just be quiet on that. But, um, yeah, you got a little bit comfortable, Candy, okay? You know how to fold up clothes. But, Candy, is me. Bitch, hold on. Um, Miss King, you want to be Miss Domestic? I ain't domestic. Okay, I ain't domestical. Okay, no, 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 All right? Candy said, bitch, it's hard out here. Kenya said, listen, I put a load of clothes in the um, washing machine every day when I wake up and I mop the floors. I said, you do that, girl? <laughs> oh, Kenya, get rid of that man, okay? Just get rid of him. 
So Cynthia is home with Mark. No, is it Mike? Mike. Wrong person. Wrong M. Okay. Cynthia home with Mike. And basically what their dilemma is, girl, he said it's good to be in the house by ourselves. You are finally not having sex with your head under the pillow and sounding like you're trying to rev up to something. Girl, when he said that noise, I said, no, Cynthia, that's how you sound. Girl, that'll make me go soft a little bit, but okay. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, um, they basically talking about the wedding situation because Cynthia had got um, a, a notification from, I think, probably her assistant or whatever, who told her, Courtney, who told her, my shoulders, I don't have shoulders. Oh, my God. That's what happened when I lose weight. All of this shit just started. You know, I used to be like this, bitch. I'm just awkward. That's why I keep on adjusting my shirt because I just feel so bummy. But anyway, um, <clears throat> girl, I got to get this stand because this ain't going to work. But anyway, you know, the governor had put out saying that, um, you know, there's no gatherings over 50 people, and she has over 250 people that's supposed to be coming to her uh, wedding. And her whole thing is she really wants that to happen. And it's like, don't I deserve? And I get that because, you know, she said a lot of bad things happened at her last wedding that she wants to forget. You know, uh, people that were supposed to be there that really wasn't supportive. And then they show the clip of Mal and her mama had her marriage license. And, you know, I would never forget that. I don't care how much I don't like the person that you are with, but I will not stoop that low. And for you to be her sister to do some shit like that, I have never got over that and never forgiven Mal for that. And then her mama to be a part of it. No, you don't do that. You don't ruin that person's day because it ain't about you. It's about them. Let them make that mistake. As we see, they she 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 learned from it, okay? Because she moved on. Now she's suing Peter, okay? And then talking about how, you know... When her and Peter had got married or whatever, they ain't really had no money. Of course, Peter didn't have no money. But, you know, girl, it was just a mess. And I get that she wants her do-over. That's basically what it seems like with uh, Cynthia. She wants her do-over for what did not happen in the last wedding. You know, she's in a comfortable place, in a comfortable position to be able to pay for it. And this quarantine and pandemic came across and now it's just messing up a lot of things. And Mike's whole situation and his whole viewpoint is it shouldn't matter how many people are there. As long as it's me and you and a priest or a preacher or pastor or whoever that's going to marry us. That's all that I care about. But, you know, Cynthia just really wants to redo. And that's what she's thinking about. And I get it, but you have to make, sometimes you just have to make adjustments. And at this point in time, you have to make adjustments. And truth be told, I think she did still have that 250 wedding, people wedding. Bitch, it wouldn't have been me. It wouldn't have been me. Listen, I ain't, mm -mm. not in the middle of a pandemic. I ain't taking no goddamn chances. Okay. I don't care if we mask and shield up and gloved up. Ashley will still be out here. Girl, no. But I get where Cynthia is coming from. But, you know, sometimes we just have to make adjustments to the situation, to the current situation that is going on. And the whole thing is you can have a regular wedding with less people on the date that you want to have it and then come back, you know, spend less money or whatever. And then once we out of this pandemic straight that we in come back and you know do it big like you wanted to you know what i'm saying that's that's the option as well but you know cynthia ain't trying to hear that at this point meanwhile porsche is still out there protesting and you know this is where um we see people starting to get arrested and i think they're about to show that you know she does get arrested and then we see um candy she's at the new uh steak and bistro whatever that she's trying to put up um, with Ty and you got Don Juan messy ass over there, you know, um, they trying to figure out how this restaurant going to be. And in the process of that, uh, Candy gets a FaceTime from Cynthia, you know, talking about Portia and the fact that she got arrested. You know, we see Portia talking about it and basically saying, you know, despite the conditions that they were in, she's not going to give up the fight and she'll do it again, which we saw she got arrested multiple times. So, you know, Portia said, bitch, I'm about that action right about now. And I apply her. But that was the first episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, thir season 13. Um, You guys tell me how you felt about it. It was cute. Not too much drama. Didn't give us really much at all. But I'm pretty sure they're going to pick it up. I'm not going to say it was a bad first episode. It just really wasn't drama-filled. So y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.